Doña Maria Eugenia Ignacia Augustina de Palafox y Kirkpatrick, the French Empress was originally born in Granada, Spain. Her father, it seems, was a Spanish collector of peerages, being a duke, count, and marquis of several different titles. Her mother was a half-Scottish, quarter-Belgian, quarter-Spanish daughter of a consul-turned-wine merchant. In 1834, Eugenie de Montijo's father sent the family away to Paris amongst fears of a cholera outbreak and after witnessing a riot and a murder in the square outside their house. Indicating an escalation in the conflicts of the First Carlist Civil War. Eugenie soon became enamored with Parisian life, so much so that when her mother tried to send her away to learn English at a school in Bristol, she tried to stow away on a ship bound for India to escape. Headstrong, dramatic, and daring, Eugenie refused to give reserved or demure responses to situations and was bold with her feelings, twice attempting suicide after experiencing romantic disappointments. In 1849, Eugenie de Montijo met Louis Napoleon, Napoleon III, then Prince President of France. Although Napoleon was at that time awaiting a response to his request for the hand of Princess Adelaide of Hohenlohe-Langenburg, he soon became infatuated with Eugenie. The court gossips began laying wagers on how long it would take before the Spaniard was bedded, but Eugenie, a devout Catholic, declared that the road to her heart lay only through the chapel, refusing to become his lover. In 1853, after receiving a rejection from Princess Adelaide, Napoleon formally announced his engagement to Eugenie. He claimed that he preferred to marry a woman whom he loved and respected over an unknown lady who would have brought advantages not unmixed with sacrifices. The pair were married on January 29, 1853 in the Tilleries and had a grander religious ceremony at Notre Dame the following day. Between an army of seamstresses and royal couturiers, 54 dresses were made for Eugenie, alongside a wedding gown containing 40,000 francs worth of Alençon lace. She wore a diamond and sapphire belt which had been given to the Empress Marie Louise by Napoleon I. At Notre Dame, she wore another stunning gown swathed in a cloud of transparent lace, with a diadem on her head and orange blossoms in her hair. Shortly after the wedding, Eugenie de Montijo was painted wearing the pearl and diamond tiara. This was part of a suite of jewelry Napoleon III ordered court jewelers in Paris to make for his marriage to her. 
The crown was made by Gabriel Lemonnier and was described by Arthur Bloch as a jewel in the purest Louis XVI style, with a filigree silver mount crusted with small brilliant cut diamonds, 1,998 diamonds in all, with a total weight of 63.30 carats, surrounding and enhancing large pearls. The largest pearl is believed to be the Pearl Napoleon, or the Regent Pearl, which was thought to once have been part of Empress Marie Louise's pearl tiara, given to her by Napoleon I as part of a pearl parure. Given as a bridal gift for his empress, Napoleon gifted Eugenie a diamond, an oval-shaped brilliant diamond weighing 51 carats, which originally belonged to Empress Catherine II the Great of Russia, who wore it often as the centerpiece of a hair ornament. Empress Catherine later gave it to her lover Grigory Potemkin, and it became known as the Potemkin Diamond. It was then passed down through his family until it was eventually bought by Napoleon III, and the diamond was renamed as the Empress Eugenie Diamond. She wore it often as the centerpiece of a diamond necklace. Made in the year of her marriage, this shoulder brooch, now in the Louvre, was part of a set of four brooches that the Empress commissioned from Francois Kramer. Both of the round pearls, the five pear-shaped pearls, and the seventeen large, cushion-cut diamonds were part of a piece that once belonged to Empress Marie-Louise, the second wife of Napoleon I. At some stage during their marriage, Napoleon gifted Empress Eugenie a pendant in the shape of a radiating star with their initials entangled on the front as a symbol of their union. Upon their marriage, Empress Eugenie had access to the state treasury and the crown jewels, which she wore with enthusiasm. While she had many stones from older pieces reset into new pieces of her own taste, creating new fashions and harking back to old fashions from the First Empire, some pieces she wore as they were, since they already fitted her taste so well. Since Napoleon was proclaimed emperor rather than crowned, there was, notably, no coronation ceremony for either Napoleon III or Eugenie de Montijo. However, in 1855 Napoleon had an imperial crown specially made for each of them, to show off at the Universal Exhibition in Paris. Empress Eugenie's was a gold crown set with 2,490 diamonds and 56 emeralds in eagle and palmet motifs, topped with a mond. Eugenie de Montijo was a great admirer of Marie Antoinette. She favored large bow brooches and stomachers, a la Marie Antoinette, as well as having a penchant for diamonds, much as Marie Antoinette did. The Empress avidly collected anything related to Marie Antoinette, often fashioning new jewelry pieces out of them, and brought the former queen's fashion back into style for the second half of the 19th century. As a Spaniard, it's thought that Eugenie may have felt a deeper connection with Marie Antoinette, the Austrian Queen of France. As a foreign figurehead whose allegiances were often questioned, and whom it was easy to blame when things went wrong, she may have felt a certain kinship. Though Eugenie fulfilled her role as empress dutifully and with relish, accompanying the emperor to balls, operas, and plays, traveling on official business, and acting as regent during Napoleon's absences. As well as advocating strongly for equality for women and making many donations to help the poor, 
Her appreciation for luxury was disliked amongst the common people and her views on royalty and monarchy were often at odds with the emperor's own reign. She was also frequently criticized for her Catholic, conservative influences on Napoleon's policies. The diamond bow brooch was one of the Empress's favorite jewelry pieces. It was originally only a bow, made by Francois Kramer and intended to be worn as a kind of buckle on a belt of diamonds, but Eugenie asked Kramer to transform it into a larger stomacher ornament, resulting in the addition of five pampils, fringes, and two elaborate diamond tassels. This brooch holds several diamonds of prestige. The diamonds forming the butterfly wings are the Mazarine 17 and 18, of the collection of 18 Mazarine diamonds bequeathed in 1661 by Cardinal Mazarine to Louis XIV. The third largest diamond in the brooch was the fourth button of Louis XIV jerkin, before being transformed into an earring for Marie Antoinette. The Fuilis de Grossilier brooch, meaning current leaf brooch in English, was once part of a stunning parure of 30 Fuilis de Grossiliers commissioned by Empress Eugenie from Bapst Jewelers in 1855. The parure comprised a girland, worn as a necklace, a tour de corsage, worn directly on the dress, and a devant de corsage brooch amongst many other pieces. There are 1856, 1864, and 1867 versions of this tiara, all made by Bapst for Empress Eugenie. The first version features the regent diamond that was once mounted on the hilt of Napoleon Bonaparte's sword in the center, the second places it on top of the tiara, and the third removed it completely. In spring 2019, French police recovered a historic ring that had been stolen out of a parked car, now belonging to Countess Olympia von Arco Zinneberg, that contains a 40-carat diamond from Eugenie's crown. In 1856, after a two-day labor that almost killed her, Eugenie de Montijo gave birth to an heir, Napoleon Eugene Louis Jean Joseph Bonaparte, Prince Imperial. She had suffered a miscarriage after a three-month pregnancy three years prior to this. These difficult experiences seemed to have created a barrier in Eugene. She held sexual love and small esteem all her adult life, regarding it not as wicked but as unimportant and cheap. It seems that after the birth, this only deepened, and she turned away Napoleon's advances. Meanwhile, Napoleon remained, as a friend put it, tortured by the flesh, and so took his desires elsewhere. Despite this disconnect, their rule and relationship did not seem to suffer much for it, Eugenie was still consulted on important matters and continued to commission grand pieces of jewelry. In 1858, Empress Eugenie commissioned a new tiara from Eugene Fontenay, a coronet-style circlet with diamond-set strawberry leaves slash florets punctuated with rectangular-cut emeralds. Each of the strawberry leaves could be removed and replaced with a set of pear-shaped pearl toppers or diamonds. After Napoleon III's defeat in 1870 in the Franco-Prussian War, Napoleon and Eugenie were exiled and Eugenie spent the rest of her time between England, Spain, and southern France. In 1872, 
Empress Eugenie resolved to part with some of her personal jewels, some of which she had taken into exile with her, some of which she had sent ahead to England after the fall, in an auction of a portion of the magnificent jewels held in London by Christie, Manson Wood. In their absence, the government of the Third Republic began to dismantle and sell the royal jewels. Many of them were sold off in the historic 1887 auction, including the diamond bow brooch, the Greek key tiara, and the pearl and diamond diadem, which sold for 78,100 francs. Not all of the jewels ended up in this sale or the previous one, however. Eugenie managed to hang on to a few beloved pieces of jewelry from her personal collection. The imperial crown of Empress Eugenie did not go to auction and was returned to her intact as reimbursement for the amount the Republic owed Napoleon III. As well as this, the emeralds from her emerald tiara somehow skipped the auction and found their way into the collection of Princess Victoria Eugenie of Battenberg, who became Queen of Spain in 1906 and had the emerald set in a necklace which she also occasionally wore as a bandeau. After losing her son in 1879 in the Zulu War in South Africa, Eugenie lived on for another 41 years alone but was comforted at least in part by her lasting friendship with Queen Victoria. The former empress died in July 1920, aged 94, at the Liria Palace in Madrid, Spain, while visiting an old friend. Music